The approach to dealing with hyperpigmentation. This question came from somebody on my broadcast channel on Instagram. Go join if you haven't. To understand most people's approach to treatment for hyperpigmentation, you need to know how it happens. Hyperpigmentation means essentially too much pigment, too much melanin, aka dark spots. There are different things that can cause this to happen, and they set off this really complex process, like even this is simplified. Up here, you see signals like UV, free radicals, inflammation, and that's why people could get conditions like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation if they have acne, melasma, which is a whole separate condition. From there, you have enzymes that take amino acids and eventually turn them into melanin pigment. The most important one is one up here called tyrosinase, which does kind of the first two steps in that process. Next, that melanin pigment is going to get packaged up into little packages called melanosomes. Those have to get transferred to other cells and they spread out and the result is dark spots. Generally speaking, the first step for any pigmentary disorder is going to be to try to alleviate some of those signals that are causing the hyperpigmentation in the first place. Because if you go ahead and treat it and you're trying to affect all this, but you're not getting rid of that, like you're not, you're not gonna fix the problem. So you see up there, UV, even if sun exposure isn't the cause of the hyperpigmentation, it's going to influence it and it's going to keep it around longer. So sun protection is going to be key. And I mean a whole sun protection strategy. It's not throwing on sunscreen in the morning and calling it a day. It's like real sun exposure avoidance, hats, um, staying in the shade when possible. Also, the sunscreen choice is important, generally speaking, most people will recommend a tinted mineral sunscreen. Mineral sunscreens, generally speaking, are considered to be superior when it comes to blocking long UVA rays, which play a real role here. And the tint helps to protect your skin from visible light. And the biggest source of visible light in this world is the sun too. If you're getting post-inflammatory pigmentation from something like acne, you're going to want to treat the acne too. Like that should be the first thing. And you could also treat the dark spots from it concurrently. Now, there are a lot of different agents that you could use for hyperpigmentation. And this is just like a smattering of some of them. And you could see that they do different things. So for instance, up here, tetrahexyldesyl ascorbate is a vitamin C derivative, and it helps to scavenge free radicals, which could be helpful. You also have here retinol, which does some inhibition of the creation of that tyrosinase enzyme that I talked about before. It also helps to accelerate turnover of those skin cells that are holding that hyperpigmentation. So hopefully a strategy to address hyperpigmentation is going to include multiple agents that work at different steps in that pigmentary pathway. Going back to the beginning of our little diagram here, that could include some antioxidants to act here. Like I said before, potentially retinol or retinoids to stop some of the synthesis of tyrosinase, and then you'll also see some really familiar faces down here that act on activated tyrosinase, the active enzyme, including stuff like kojic acid, arbutin, azelaic acid. Another ingredient of note that acts further downstream is niacinamide. This is why you'll often see this uh, packaged together with something like vitamin C, because it acts way further down this pathway and interferes with melanosome transfer. So it kind of takes those packages of melanin and makes them get lost in the mail. I know it's a complex explanation for a really complex process, and that's why I always say, you know, for any skin issue, it's probably best to see a dermatologist if you can first so they could help guide you through this process.